Hey there! Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener, welcome to the OCG Fam Show to you. My YouTube buddies, what's going on? Let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it. And speaking of the comments, there's a question we have in the comments and we've answered it before. And the question is, what do you do when the pH in your soil is too high? How do you get that down? And the obvious answer, the obvious answer is, uh, you know, you lower your mixture, the pH of your mixture a little bit and you try to slowly try to creep that down. And that's, you know, in most cases what you're gonna do and it's gonna work just fine. But when we did the questions, viewer questions a little while ago with Scott, it's probably a couple weeks ago, we really got deeply into it and he got into some way more advanced ways to do that. And I wanna make a video about that where I go into short quickly about how that happens. But what I wanted to do today is I wanted to show you that section of that video uh, so we can talk about it and figure out about making a video that's more concise about really advanced ways of dealing with pH. But I think it's important to see this because he really, really digs into it. So watch this video if you're interested about the pH situation, getting the pH level down. I'll talk to you after. Uh, Yamakru250 says, how do you drop the pH of the soil using nectar for the guts? So he's got maybe if you get some soil that's got a high pH to start or maybe you're just drifting high. Yeah. What do you want to do to bring that down? Uh, I mean, just start feeding at a lower pH for a week. But not significantly lower. You don't want to go no. below maybe like 6-0 or somewhere? Yeah, there. that's about it. 6-0. That's like the bottom of the... And then, then what I'll do, I mean, if it's really high 7-2, 7-5 soil that I just uh -huh. can't get it to budge, I'll make up a slurry of, you know, 1 to 2 ounces of Herculean. Uh -huh. Just that, with water, have a pH to that 5 9 6 uh -huh. and I'll water it to where it's dense but not running out uh-huh and I want that organic acid to react in the base and start breaking down that base and converting it back into more of a neutral pH and is that part of the purpose of a, of a, of a flush of a preventative flush is to, is to be most, a stronger one. version of making it's so like if we take our regular mix and we make a little lower pH that's probably not going to be as effective as doing a flush with just herc at that lower is that well, true? Yeah, I don't, well I mean because I'm focusing on just reacting the, the alkalinity yeah. of the pH versus yeah. feeding the plant. So uh -huh. as long as I'm not focusing on plant feeding today, and I'm putting this down, because calcium is not most available at 6.0, but that limestone in the, or whatever is creating a high pH in the medium is active at 13. Uh -huh. So if I put in a 6 pH herc, it's going to react to that higher pH limestone and then start buffering that down or breaking it down. With limestone, if you take limestone and you throw an acid at it, it creates a ton of energy. Sure. It hydrolyzes the limestone and then breaks that down into a base. I mean, it breaks it down from a base back into a neutral. But you have to slice like vinegar and baking soda. It's the same concept. Okay, so we feel that Herc on its own is a more effective pH dropper than a normal feeding day, but we wouldn't want to skip normal feeding days on a regular no, basis to no, do that. No, and if I had to, I'd do Gaia and Herc really low pH just to because I just want to react the pH I'm not focusing on feeding but I try not to like torture them with a bad pH yeah but they're still gonna eat some of that herc you're throwing up there they're oh, not gonna sure. starve on that no, day no, no, but no, you're no. gonna get more done to the point of well, the because pH. your soil pH is so high so even if you're at six and you're not delivering it as they're balancing that'll raise the pH up of the herc bring the pH of the soil down and then make them all available so Okay. If it's really bad, then unfortunately just like soybean or grape pumice or, you know, there's dry amendments that are acidic, you know, down to earth acid loving mix. You know, they're just uh, more acidic, like five, eight fertilizers designed for acid loving plants. But don't over apply those because I'd rather try to bring stuff down than try to bring stuff back up. Once your sure. soil slips into the acidic side, it's a nightmare to try to get them to accept food. Their plants accept food at 7.0. I don't care what people say. Most good, healthy potting soils are 7.0. Yeah, yeah. People that are aiming for 6.0, I'm just baffled. I'm like, what are you doing? That's just pure nitrates, pure phosphates, pure potassium. There's no calcium going into your plant. That's when you get that straw, that hay, that, you know, the lawn tasting flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shouldn't taste like a lawn. No. Should taste like the damn apple that it's called. <laughs> blueberries should be blueberries. <laughs> Schnozberries should be schnozberries. Okay, so what do you think of that? I thought that was pretty interesting. It kind of went into it a little deeper than we've gone into before, but more importantly than what you thought of it, do you have any other questions based on what you just saw so that we can put together a little video that's uh, just a real quick, like three minute kind of thing that explains this in depth concisely. So uh, let me know what you thought. I love you, and uh, we'll get on that tomorrow. The OCG Fam Show.
It's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Bam Show. See you tomorrow.